Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Emerald Dreadnoughts. About two and a half years ago, I did a video called 50 vs. 1. Can you beat 50 light cruisers with a battleship? Uh, back in the day, yes, I could, but they've since changed the game quite a bit. Now, I have changed the challenge a little bit. It's still a 50 vs. 1, but as opposed to last time, I started in 1940, I'm now starting in 1950. The enemy started in 1930, they're going to be now starting in 1940. So 50 Spanish light cruisers against one to-be-designed French battleship. We're going to have to go big, we're going to have to go with a lot of guns, otherwise I'll not really be able to get a whole lot of ammunition with me. Now the enemy, light cruisers, so there is a pretty decent chance that the enemy is going to be carrying torpedoes. Um, to counteract that, I'm going to have to use anti-torp, but I think it's going to be 5. Anti-torp 5 to make sure that I can take the hit, um, potentially have some flooding, but not a whole lot, and that the ship will continue to sail. When you're using a 95,000 ton ship, I think dodging is not really that likely. Turbo electric drive might give you some options. It is going to give you 200% acceleration and 75% deceleration. Gas turbines aren't quite that good, but they are a bit less uh, weighty, I believe. Yeah, the gas turbines are 63,000 tons. This is 67,000 tons. So with this, I'll have a ship that might be able to slow down and accelerate. But at this, at this rate, mm, we might have to do something about that. Because I don't know if 90,000 tons or 95,000 tons can really be sped up that quickly. Now, let's see. This deck is not going to be the easiest one to use. It is... Yeah, it's quite restrictive, really. Because this tower is designed to carry some really big guns. Really big guns is not necessarily something in my favor. Uh, potentially the Light Modern Tower 10 would be better. Yes. With the Light Modern Tower 10, I think I can fit another turret over there. Now, I'm only finding light cruisers. So the enemy is numerous. The enemy has the potential, actually, to burn me down, come to think of it. And the enemy definitely has the potential to torpedo me. Using 20-inch guns or something to that effect, um, it's not really going to be required. I think 14, maybe 15-inch guns. It's already actually stretching it a bit. 13-inch guns. Let's go. 13-inch guns. Quads, triples, duels. Hmm. Challenging. When it comes to armor pen, I'm going to go with semi-armor ballistic. Because, or semi-armor piercing. Because I don't need a ton of pen. I just need to be able to make a couple of sizable holes in the enemy. And I believe semi-armor piercing is going to be able to do just that. When it comes to number of guns. Let's see. More guns gives you more firepower and more ammunition. Considering I'm facing 50 ships, uh, I'm definitely going to need more ammunition. So let's go with an increased complement. Giving me, at least with one turret, if the game would like to pop up here. Uh, no, it would not. Well, that's nice. How many shells do I get? I get 594 shells. So yeah, you can keep that going for a while. And if I just add a whole bunch more turrets, I can probably end up with something like uh, way over 2,500 shells, which is ideally a couple hundred more than I need. Now, it's... <laughs> it's looking like a really small turret on this ship. If I use side mounts, they're going to be considered different groups, aren't they? Yes. You was yeah, you couldn't do this before. You could not do this before. Um, back in the day, the game didn't consider these as two weapon groups. It considered it as one, which meant that you could have guns like these, but they would both try to engage the same target. The game has since been updated and now considers these turrets to be separate weapons. So one group can ideally target one, uh, one side of the ship and the other can target the other. So this is going to give me a lot more firepower. 
If you're engaging a front target, it makes absolutely no sense. But I'm going to be trying to engage targets on all sides. So it might look ridiculous, um, but I do believe it will help. And I think I can do the same thing here. Well, maybe not, because this one might not want to turn that well. Yeah, see, it crashes into the other one. So we're going to have to try and really put these on the outer edges of the ship. No, it doesn't want to turn. Because it crashes into the... Yeah. It, the game seems to think it crashes out into the side of the ship. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What if I go triple barrel here? Because they are a little sleeker. But... And that's a consideration, but the problem now facing is that this is a triple barrel turret. They might fire the same type of ammunition, but the game doesn't seem to think so. The game's going to go, nope, it's not a quadruple turret, um, so it cannot actually access the same ammunition stowages. Which, if you think about it, makes no sense. But this is ultimate of dreadnoughts, and many things in this game make no sense. All right, so can I fit another set of turrets? Because I can make this thing wider. That might make it easier. I think the game was never designed... Or rather, this tower was never designed to face something like this. So unfortunately, that won't work. You're going to sit over there. You're going to sit over there. Check. That should mean that I now have enough room on the stern to make this work. Yeah, that should work. I am looking at 10,000 tons of displacement, which I might need in order to make the ship a bit more protected. Barbettes are something that come to mind. Now, propellant, uh, TNT, triple base. Um, you get a bit more ricochet chance here, but you also get a bit more pen. With these guns, and I have th uh, 32 of them, 32, 32 inches. Oh, sorry, well, that would be a bit big. A uh, 32, 13 inches, giving me a reload of 43 seconds per turret. And ideally, the ability to engage targets on different sides of the ship at the range of 36 kilometers. And um, let's say I'm firing at 20 kilometer range. I can fire a shell with pretty decent speed that can get through 14 and a half inches of armor. Now, I believe you can maximum armor a light cruiser with about six inches, plus armor quality bonuses. It should be sufficient. There is the opportunity to go semi-ballistic, but these have a slightly higher chance to ricochet off of the ship. This would give me... Yeah, you're looking at like two to three inches of difference, which for some people in some situations, can be a lot of difference. Um, in case of my ship, I'm not too sure if it's going to be an issue. Reload is... Wow, reload just improved to 30 seconds. That's really good. So it might say you're firing two rounds a minute, but that's per barrel. So a quadruple turret fires eight shots per minute. That's uh, substantial. Now, let's see about radar systems. Um... Yeah, we're going to go with coincidence range finding because I need more gun aiming speed. I expect to be switching targets pretty frequently and I don't really care about long range accuracy that much. Interference from own guns, nah, I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue. As for torpedoes, I know I'm working with an overweight ship by the way, but I'll deal with that in a second. As for torpedoes, I'd like to hear them arriving is it something I can really deal with? Um, maybe. Because I got a, an acceleration of one knot per second. And that's rounding it up. That's pretty substantial. That means that this ship can shift um, very quickly. So now I need to figure out a way to make this thing actually viable. Um, Anti-Torp 4. Yeah, that saves me 3,000 tons, and we're going from 50% torpedo percent, or 50 percent torpedo reduction to 60. Uh, you're looking at 10% less flooding chance. It'll be fine. I do want to have the auxiliary engines. 
Can I get another funnel? I know that's not going to be easy because of all the weight. But an additional funnel gives me additional engine efficiency. An additional engine efficiency gives me more, holy moly, more acceleration at 1.6 knots per second. That is substantial. That is really substantial. I don't think I'll be able to... Squ well... Squeeze another turn in, or funnel in there. 1.7. Okay, at this point we're starting to have diminishing returns. 1.6 should be fine. Then... Let's get a bit of better steering in there. Um, yeah, more acceleration, more better. 1.6. I'm still 5,000 tons overweight, and I haven't done anything to armor. The good news is I don't need to have that much armor, because we're finding light cruisers. So let's say 12 inches of armor. Um, maybe 3 inches of deck. I do want to have more on the superstructure, because that can get burnt down. 18 inches of turret armor is a lot. We're going to reduce that to 12. 12... Four deck, three is fine. Aft deck, three inches is fine. Let's go with six and six. And we're now approaching what is a decent amount of displacement. Anything I can change? Yeah, the range. Range is not that important. And there we are. We are now with a weight limit. Okay. What are we going to do with that extra weight? I can get an RDF. It's going to help me with gun aiming speed a little bit. It's just 6% though. Secondary armament, in case you're wondering, I really don't care. Um, the 8 inch gun, yeah. You're going to have to rely on either fire setting or hoping that these things will pen the, sorry, the light cruisers that we're facing. I'm not sure if they'll do that, so I'm not going to bother. This means that with the rest of that displacement, I can up the drafts. A taller, it's a less stable shooting platform. It's more resistant to flooding. Like, I want a more stable shooting platform, so I want to have less draft. But the less draft you have, which is basically also less freeboard, the more likely you are to flood. Which, considering the enemy is uh, pretty torpedo heavy, is not a fantastic situation to be in. Let's see, cap ballistic. With cap to ballistic, I can pen... Yeah, about half. About half of what my AP can pen. So that would be a nice addition to have, but I'm using increased AP shells, which gives me a lot more AP than HE, and I'm really not expecting to have to use most of those HE shells. So, let's go with a bit more superstructure armor. A um, bit more on the conning tower. Don't want to lose that, because it's going to make sure that I don't have accuracy. Uh, we're going to have to up the aft belts to try and get rid of the weight offsets, although 5% is negligible. I'm what, at like half a ton overweight? There. 4.8, reasonably well balanced. I think it's one of the weirder ships I've built. I wouldn't really take this thing into a campaign, but then again, that's not the point. We're going to see if we can take on 50 different targets at the same time. Okay, here we go. Charles Martel. She has to do basically two things. One, don't get burned down. And two, don't get crew loss. The enemy is this... <laughs> is this weird Spanish light cruiser with... Um, what is that? 6.4 inch gun in quadruple setups. On top of that, they have these nice little anti-air batteries, I guess. What is that? 12... 12 single 2.3s? Yeah. And then a couple of... Which you see up front here is a 2 inch gun, a 2.3. And they have 20 3.1s. So probably these things up here. They're on the balconies. Yeah, and they're next to the main tower. So that's a lot of small DACA, but beyond that it probably doesn't do that much. Like it stops at 7.9 kilometers. Torpedo stop at 11. And main gun stop at 13. Now, considering the way that the Charles Martel is laid out, ideally it's sailing right through the middle. That's not necessarily going to be in my best interest, not right now. So I'll just head on over to starboard, go broadside, 
and let the guns rip. But I'm not going to target some outlier ship. We're going to target little clusters to see if I can get an accidental secondary kill. Do we have enough ammunition for this fight? Do we have enough ammo? Oh, holy shit. Yeah, we do. Um, the game considers this port and starboard weapon section to be a separate group. I believe... No, actually it doesn't. They share ammo. Okay, good. Um, this means I'm going to have about 4,750 shells, minus the few ones that I fired, for a total of 4,740 shells. So that should keep the game going for a while. Considering there's 50 targets, this gives me about 90 rounds per ship. Early game, I don't expect a great amount of accuracy, but um, that can kind of be mitigated by the fact that there are so many different targets so close together like this. So even if you're targeting, like, target 1, you might hit target 2 and potentially target 3 and 4 that you don't actually target at the time. Simply because the AI is clustered. Now, what I also suspect is going to happen is that the AI is just going to have um, a bit of a problem with trying to dodge its own ships. The AI tends to sail around with collision avoidance on which means that every group, every division, and they seem to have four ships per division, is trying to dodge the other one. So nobody has a clue what the hell's going on, nobody knows where they're turning, and everybody's going to keep running into each other. In case you're wondering why the game looks like it's running on fairly low FPS, um, it's because the game is really badly optimized. That's unfortunately not something I can really fix. The situation is such that the game runs on one core. Yeah, I know. It's 2023. Why is it running on one core? Um, who knows? The developers chose for that, and they didn't actually bother to change it. So here we have a game that is trying to simulate 50 ships plus one plus shells on one core, which is going about as well as you can see. So it's not that I need a new system, in case you're wondering what my system specs are, you can see those down below in the description. Um, the game is unfortunately not exactly designed to go for these huge scale battles. It's not even that huge actually. You can go worse. Uh, you can do 1 versus 99, as the game is capped at simulating 100 ships in a battle. At that point, um, you're going to be competing with Kerbal Space Program for... Um, frame rates though like there there's not going to be a whole lot of things going on on your screen at any given time now i'm going to try and running at three times speed and seeing how much of a slideshow it turns into we're getting some serious damage in there we go first casualty the other guy has already taken some serious damage and is about half health Ooh, juicy target here it's like four of them together he said in a group of 50. Um, <clears throat> no, I mean, if I don't hit this one... There we go, I might hit the other one. Are they trying to breed new destroyers or something? Like, what are you doing? The smoke is making it a bit difficult to see. Mashing three light cruisers together is not going to suddenly give you a heavy cruiser. Or a battle cruiser. It's not going to work that way, my friend. Sadly not. Would be a great campaign mechanic. Fuse ships together. And you suddenly get a bigger ship. I for one would love like a, a catamaran or trimaran light cruiser design. Ooh, look at that. This one, this one, and that one hit. Nice. I would like it if this game maybe took itself a little bit less seriously every now and then. Because... Having something like a, a dual hull, and I don't mean a single hull like this with dual layer. No, I mean a dual hull like a, a catamaran Yamato. Something like that would be the dream. Just make silly ships. You used to be able to do this to some extent as you changed some numbers in a config file. But ever since the game introduced the ability to share designs, sadly, that got sacrificed. And you cannot do that anymore. 
Now, the horde is still coming my way. They're only 16 kilometers out now. If these things start lighting me up, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Because I will not be able to sustain those hits for very long without burning down. Even though I have maximum bulkheads, even though I have the ability of an elite crew with the best firefighting equipment possible and the best armor, the game just basically doesn't care about that. Sadly. Let's see, start culling a little bit of the lead fleet here. And see if we can reduce these to dust. Ooh, splashed right in front of it. Range... 14-8. Every 30 seconds we send 16 of these shells onto a target. And yeah, that left a mark. Let's see the explosive damage. Let's see if that's going to do anything. We have a remarkable 75-82% to 82 chance to hit. I'll take those odds. Yeah, it's not doing as much damage. It's definitely causing some damage. But I think armor piercing is the better choice here. That last salvo should take the ship out. Well, she might flood. There she goes. Wait, are you shooting me? Is your 6.4 in range? It is. Okay, time to start turning and burning. I am not interested in taking a light show from these ships. <coughs> There we go, we're already starting to lose crew. No! Turn! And hit it with everything you got. Yeah, that should slow them down. Quite a bit. I don't know if I can outrun the horde. So what I'm gonna have to do is outshoot the horde. I need to make sure that there's just nothing standing. And that I knock these things down as quickly as I can. Oh, this is one huge target. Wipe it out. Parcel pen? Come on. Because it's not just these two guys that are in range. It's starting to get more and more and more. What was their range exactly? Like 13 kilometers. So... Yeah, that puts basically these guys in range. The rest, not so much. This one's down. It just doesn't know it yet. There we go. Target the next. I need to know what the top speed of these things is, because I need to know how fast I need to be running away. Which, yes, yes, I know, I'm a French ship, so the irony is not lost on me there. You're gone. Next. Yeah, you're definitely gone. Okay, so we had that thing identified. It can do 29.7 knots. Oh, that's bad news. I can do about 29 knots on a good day. Fortunately, today is a good day. So I should be able to maintain that speed going through the battle. But the question is, um, if I start taking damage, if I start losing structural integrity, how long am I going to be able to maintain that speed? Ah, and how long can I maintain accuracy considering everybody and their sister ship is smoking up? That's going to make accuracy a bit of a problem. How many guns am I able to bring to bear? Because I'm firing with both groups on the stern. Maybe this gun on the bow? Yeah, we're already committed to a star return to some extent, so let's continue with that. Cristobal is having a bit of flooding issues. Standard bulkheads, cramped crew quarters. Okay. So I don't think Cristobal is going to survive that one. Let's go for Santa Rosalia. You really have to maintain your distance. Because this gets very dangerous very quickly. Uh, decent damage. I know I'm not exactly sailing away from them, but I'm trying to find a middle ground between doing damage and sailing away. 
I can surely sail away, and that's going to decrease my DPS. Or I can sail broadside just a little bit. Like, make sure I get at least four turrets to fire. And with that, be able to shrug these guys off as quickly as possible. Ammo-wise, I think we're good. Yeah, we got 4,300 rounds left. That's that ship out of commission. General Lezzo. Carmen. See, Carmen already isn't a threat. Because she can't run at her top speed anymore. She's going to be struggling to do so. She's doing 18 knots, so I can already outrun her. Meaning she'll be out of range pretty soon. If she doesn't flood outright. Same for General Lezzo. I think the general is done. The problem is now that everybody else is still able to do 29 knots, and my ship is doing 28.6. So they're starting to approach a bit more than I would really like. Rena Cristina. Decent damage. Go to HE. That's more like it. I'm trying to get bow hits and make sure that these things flood. I'm curious to see if HE is going to do better. Ideally, I'd not try and burn these things down. I mean, that's a really cheesy mechanic and it works phenomenally well. But it's not something that really sits well with me. Well, we can get, we can get a pen with these HE shells. I think AP is better. AP just does more damage. But at a 90% structural integrity. Yeah, there's definitely too much of this fleet coming into range now. We're going to turn to port. And try to shrug off a bit more of these guys. I don't care if I leave a couple of ships half damaged. Some of them might still sink. Some of them at least might be out of range. There we go. The last thing I want to do is cruise right through this group because I'll burn down probably halfway before I even get there. Would make for a nice, well, a nice light show, but beyond that, probably doesn't do that much. It would sink my ship very, very, very quickly. Boom. Come on, call the numbers. Okay, perfect. Steady as she goes. We've lost 6.5% of the crew. We got a few fires aboard the Charles, but beyond that, she's fine. Ooh, this is good. Nice cluster. We can take out three ships there in a hurry. There's the damage Ligera. Ooh. Rio de la Plata is serving as armor for the Petronilla by the looks of it. Boom. Next is the Isabel. I've lost 8.5% of my crew. There goes the La Plata. Come on. Now, arguably, I might have been able to take torpedo launchers to these guys and really quickly start cutting their numbers down. Um, I'm not sure if that was really going to speed things along, but I can try that in a different video. Like, just send one massive torpedo wave that way. The issue is, you're then going to be sitting reloading for a very long time. For, like, up to uh, 1,200 seconds or 1,500 seconds, depending on what type of crew you have and the type of torpedoes you're trying to reload. 10% of crew lost. So far, so good. They have some flooding issues there. We're only getting partial pens with these shells. What sort of armor you got? Not a whole lot. Most of their armor is on their turret. They got a 3.8 inch 4 belt, which is a very interesting choice considering their main belt's only 0.8 inches. So, this ship is like a reverse all... Oh wow, flush fire. Uh, a reverse... What you call that? Um... Citadel 5, I have it. All or nothing? Something like that? I don't know, I've been playing this game for a couple hundred hours. Completely forgot about the name, I'm sorry. 
Anyway, it's an armor scheme where you basically armor up the core of your ship and leave the bow and stern exposed. And this thing did the reverse. Armoring up the bow and the stern and leaving the main ship, or the, the core of the ship, exposed. So in that sense, it really doesn't make a whole lot of design logic there. But this is what the AI picked. And the AI works in mysterious ways. That was good damage there. Villa de Madrid. You're going to be going down. Maybe Covadonga as well. Crew lost 12-7. So far it's not impacting my reload. I'd very much appreciate it we can keep it like that. Oh, that was a good hit. Now in case you're wondering, why are you not using something like 20-inch guns? Because it's way overkill. It does way too much damage. It is possible to do it with a 20, certainly. But you're not firing fast enough. And I would probably need a firing platform that can do a heck of a lot more speed. So something that can do like 35 knots might be more suitable if you have those bigger guns. Because you're going to be needing a bit more time to deal the damage. Even, a, I think a single or a dual 20 incher is going to be sitting and reloading for up to a minute, maybe more, depending on barrel length. And this means you don't output as many shells. Whereas with the amount of shells I'm outputting, I'm spreading the damage around. And I'm hitting multiple ships and slowing everything down. If you have a 20 inch shell, you're just going to be hitting one target. You cannot split the damage of a 20 inch shell. And a 20 incher doesn't have splash damage. So it's not like you'll be able to go, oh, don't worry. Um, I'm going to hit, for example, the Navas with a 20. And the Caridad behind her is also going to take damage. And same for the Libertad. Sadly, it does not work like that. But with, a, uh, with 13 inch shells, you just put a bit more volume of fire out there. And so far, it seems to be working. Boom. We're flooding. Libertad. The rest of the cluster here is staying behind. They're all still jockeying for position. So it's like about half, maybe more than half their fleet is currently not in this fight. Which is good news for me because I've lost 17.8% of my crew. And I don't feel particularly happy about that. Okay, let's continue on the turn. Get a bit more firepower on this cruiser here. Because they're also getting into torpedo range. It's 21 inch torps. It's not big. But they're fast. They're not that easy to dodge. Slow. Potentially even big torpedoes. I'd actually prefer because you can much more easily dodge those. Hold on. Are you guys all turning around? Yeah. Look at that. They're all turning around. Okay. Switch fire to the Serena. All of those Star Trek Picard fans. Sorry, I'm going to take out the Sedena. Didn't like that ship anyway. Didn't feel Starfleet enough for me. Sedena is flooding. Very good. Ooh. There she goes. Uh-oh. All back emergency. And the ship is <laughs> sailing in reverse. <laughs> Beautiful. Why are you not dead? Why are you not dead? There you go. Rectified. Okay. Uh, Charles Martel. All ahead full. Okay, so it's 1329. Current speed, 13 knots. 135. What? In six seconds, I reversed the direction by about 30 knots. I don't think that's healthy for a hull this big. Like, I appreciate the ability of the ship to be able to do that. But I hope to God that the crew is holding on to something, because that cannot have been comfortable. When you're suddenly accelerating at such a rate. Here's the accuracy again. There we go. 
I think we can take out some more of these guys before they become a problem. Hopefully. Missed. Come on. Extremadura. Huelva. Yes, that's it. Both flooding. Serious flooding on the Extremadura. Ooh, there goes Huelva. That's more like it. Navas de Toloso. Because this one is already turning back. Let's get some damage in on Reina Mercedes. Flooding? Yeah, they're flooding. Okay. At this point, I kind of want to try going bow in. I don't want to sail... Yeah, let's target the thing that's like 25 kilometers out. 30 even. I don't want to sail directly through the group, but I want to see how far I can get. I have lost about half of the crew that I can lose. So in that sense, I gotta be careful. But I want to test my theory of can I engage two different targets at the same time? Or does the game consider them all to be the same target? Or the same weapon group, rather. My bow turret's still trying to rotate into place or something. Oh, never mind. So I need to keep shooting at a target until it's gone. And then let the ship itself pick a different target. We're shooting at Serena Mercedes. Yeah. So I need to wait until she's gone, which is going to be any moment now. Gone. So we got one going for no target. Okay. Congreso. The other 13 inches are still loading. But they don't have a target, really? They do Oh. Damn. I really hope that was going to work. Yeah, you're gone. Congresso gone. Hmm. That's surprising, actually. Yeah, we've got both guns firing at the same target, the Antonio. Both groups. So this is bad. Because I now only have really one... Yeah. I have one target. More importantly, I just have one set of guns actually doing the job. So we're gonna go broadside. We're gonna have to weather the storm. Fortunately, the storm has died down a little bit, and I should be able to get rid of a few more of these very quickly. As they're mostly half flooded. One down. Ligera. Now, what I would love to see with this game is that you can just armor up a ship and weather the storm. Like, sail right through the group, brawling everything. Pretty much like you might be used to from World of Warships with some of the German super battleships. Sadly, the game then goes, yeah, but you got too much fire going on or you're going to have lost too much of your crew. So that's not an option. Torpedoes in the water. All back emergency. Watch the speed. And we're reversing. Yep, ship's reversing. I'm not sure if we can reverse fast enough, though. Beep, beep. Oh, that's very, very, very helpful. That torpedo detonated. <laughs> and the other ones were also launching at a position where I definitely am not going to be right now. Take out the Carmen. Okay, I want to see this again, see if it was a fluke. One, two, three, four, five. And we're back at 25 knots, so yeah. I can accelerate about 5 knots per second. So the acceleration that the game shows you is complete nonsense. And you just really cannot trust that number. Which is really weird. How are you still here? You're not. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying, I want to see those brawls where you just sail right into the thick of it and eliminate as many of these things as possible. Sure, you're going to eat like torpedoes left, right, and center. 
You're gonna get torpedoed to death. But at least you're gonna go down in a blaze of glory as is exposed or as opposed to oh crap, the whole ship's gonna burn down. Which I mean this ship hasn't really taken that much damage. Yeah, by now it's adding up, 53%. It hasn't taken that much damage, and considering the fact that my crew's gonna die or the whole ship's gonna be overexposed to fire damage, I think it's not a great mechanic. And I really hope that they change it. That's another one down. I'm starting to get a little too close to these guys. Sorry, Principe Alfonso. If you have any crazy challenges you'd like me to do, let me know down below in the comments. I'm up for trying new challenges. Or potentially revisiting old ones and see how well they're keeping up. Next. I don't really want to engage things directly astern, though. Because less guns to fire at it. Yeah, that shall keep them occupied for a few more minutes. Libertad, down. Next, Leon. And Leon is badly damaged. Wow. Peninsula is surviving by the skin of its teeth. And now she's not. Focused on the Leon. The rest of them, not yet in range. Leon, Africa. Rena Cristina, you're still here. Interesting. Gone. Crew loss is getting concerning now. I'm 35% crew loss. I can go as high as 45. And that'll be the end of it. Because then my ship surrenders. Because too much of my crew has been killed. So I really need to start limiting the amount of crew loss that I take. Which basically means reduce the amount of guns shooting back at you. Let's go back to lower speed. Eliminate Rena. There she goes. Next to Huelva. Flash fire. Gone. Huelva. Ammunition wise, we're doing pretty well. I can still revert to high explosive if I feel like it. I think armor piercing is just way more efficient though. What has me concerned right now is the structural integrity of the ship at 36%, as well as my crew loss. I did, oh, I took two torpedoes. Well, I wasn't paying attention. Focus on the wounded ones first. Yeah, okay, now there's a new wounded one, fine. Any other wounded? No. Because they're so small, they're still proving somewhat difficult to detect. At least some of them are. That ought to do it. Mendez. Caridad is gone. 16 kilometers. At least I'm not taking any more damage. That's good. There's 6k damage there. There goes the Mendez. General. General's gone. You just really need to hit them with one volley and they sink. Now sometimes you really strike out with these cruisers. Like they're not that well built, like these. Sometimes you're going to face a foe that is far harder to eliminate. And unfortunately you don't really get a do-over. You can change your design, but their design is then also going to get changed because the game regenerates their design. So it's not like you'll be able to go, ah, oh, okay, so this design didn't work against this target. I'm going to change it. Shit, they closed in t way too fast. Way too fast. 36% crew loss. Run! Charles! Get them! Castilla, gone. There's a group of three of them here. No, Castilla's not gone. Lealtad's gone. 38% crew lost. The ship is starting to burn. 
And my ability to control fires is dwindling very, very quickly. Oh god, don't die now. Come on. We're not done yet. Pilas is gone. Take out the Herman Cortez. Quickly! Yep, good enough. You're gone. Next! Victoria. Jeez, they're certainly out in force. 40% crew lost. Structural integrity down to 26%. Oh boy. Switch to the Victoria. Top speed. Limited to 21 knots because of all the damage to the ship. So now I cannot outrun them anymore. That means I'm going to have to outshoot them. But my DPS is dropping. My reload time is going up because I don't have as much crew anymore. That should take care of that cruiser. Next is the Elcano. 41.5. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That should do you. Next. Decent damage. I need more. 42.8% of the crew is gone. 43. 43.1. Ferrolano is gone. Eliminate the Almansa. Yep, that's gone. Vasco Nunez del Bilbao. 44% crew lost. Eliminate the fire spammers, please. 44-4. 44-7. We're going to die. 44-8. No! Ah, uh, damn it. Uh, like I mentioned, <clears throat> fire damage. Fire damage, fire damage. Or crew loss. And it turned out to be crew loss. How many ships did they have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine ships left. Wait, these light cruisers cost them a billion? My battleship cost me seven billion. How did they build a light cruiser costing them a billion? What sort of over-engineered thing is this? Now, don't mind the crew training, because the moment that a ship dies, it reverts the crew training. Here, the, the actual crew training is trained. It might just be the base hull. Some base hulls are really expensive. For not really any apparent reason. And they're running 167% armor quality. So that's modern armor. Yeah, that'll make it more expensive as well. Anyway, um, could I have won this battle? Yeah, probably. Uh, if I had not lingered. I stuck around a little bit too long. Hope you enjoyed it. Nonetheless, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. And if you have more challenges, by all means, post them down below. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you soon for more Dreadnoughts.